Well, hello, YouTube. It's Baylor Mage here again. Uh, today, we're going to do a little tutorial on the Alchemy Bench. The Alchemy Bench itself is actually probably, I've discovered so far, one of the most important parts. Um, I have managed to get by most of the time on just three slots, uh, but I can certainly fill all five. I would say, as soon as you start spending money on this game, uh, alchemy slots should be pretty high in the priority. Um, so we're going to go over what its main uses are. So there's a few things that we will use occasionally. So one of them is in here. We can make things like chaos elements to sell. We can also, if we scroll down the bottom, make crafted statues to sell. Both of these we should only ever do if we have an excess. If you have an excess of gold, tons of gold to your name, more gold than you can use, you can make crafted statues. They cost 50,000 gold to make. You can then sell them to other players for rubies. That's great. If you find yourself having way too many essence growth, whatever these are called, elements, whatever they're called, um, to grow your gem levels. If you find yourself with too many of them, uh, you can always make these and sell them to other players because you cannot sell the elements themselves. But if you combine them into chaos elements, you can sell them. So that's one of our uses. Another use is to upgrade essences as we craft with them. Um, especially, especially magic fixed essences. We'll do a separate crafting video explaining why these are so important. But most of the time we should almost never use any magic birth essences when we're trying to craft our own gear once we're in the end game. We should mostly only be using these magic fixed essences. So we do want to craft them up. Almost the same thing with the rare versions. So we're going to do that. It also allows you to upgrade skill runes and support runes. If you get 10 magics, you can make a rare, things like that. Um, it also lets you convert your skill runes. So, so if you get way too many skill rune magic upgrade essences, you can change them into links. Or if you get way too many links, you can change them into skills. Same for the rare. So those are the those are the occasional uses. But our biggest usage for the alchemy table and something we are going to churn out constantly whenever we have one of those things that I listed is not getting done. We're going to be doing two things. We're going to be on this tab right here. Um, we're going to be doing cards and charms. Um, what I will do is I'll point out the one other thing just in case people don't know the link rune synthesis magic and rare same for skills um, this is how we get all of our synthesized gems so we will want to be doing them as we get them but you do not get nearly enough of those things and or nearly enough unstables for that to be like a constant process that we do that's just something we're going to do every now and then whenever we've got three magics to burn or three unstables we're going to burn through those. And then now on to our important things. We're going to start with charms because this is the most important. You may notice you get a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of charms in the end game. Now, I do not have a lot of charms. The reason for that is because I have tiered them up constantly, just constantly tearing up charms. So whenever we tear up charms, I actually don't even have enough to do it because I've been doing it too much. Uh, but we want to tier them up in a way where we go a tier one charm, a tier one charm and a tier two charm. And we want to do that all the way up until we get to tier fives. This gives us a, if we're doing from tier one, it gives us a 33% chance to get a tier three charm, a 33% chance to get a tier two back and a 33% chance to get a tier one back. That makes it the most efficient method to get the highest output out of your materials. What we're trying to do is craft everything up into tier six charms. They are the only charms worth IDing once you're wearing anything basic. You should obviously ID some charms just to get something on that's relevant as quick as possible whenever you have a charm slot. But as soon as you've got something in there, we're very ID scroll limited. So we want the best possible charms we can get. The tier of mod that is on charms is 
always the same tier as the charm so we get tier six mods on on tier six charms and we get tier fives on tier fives and we get tier ones on tier ones that is the difference between having something like 12 to 20 percent damage or 64 to 70 percent damage so charms are very very important but we do not get provided with tier six charms really almost at all i i don't even know if i've ever seen one drop um if i have it's not many we synthesize all of them and we will just be churning through them constantly you should most of my day there's five of them running on my bench all the time just you come out of a map you pick up your rewards, you put in more charms, and you just keep going. You just keep tearing them all up to tier six, looking for really good charms. Charms will scale us in the end game by quite a bit. I am still missing quite a few charms here, but you can see some charms that aren't relevant for my character. Some of the mods like 70% crit rate on a single charm, right? So charms like this, but relevant to your character quite a lot of damage quite a lot of defenses if that's the route you go very very strong you definitely definitely want to be doing those all right the next thing that we want to be doing whenever we're out of charms is cards now there are two ways to synthesize cards up and they're both pretty important there are all of the tiers down the bottom here these are four to one so if i slap in four tier one cards and i hit go that is going to pop out one tier two card now if i pop in four magics it'll pop out a magic tier two if i pop in four rares it'll pop out a rare tier two so it's four to one to upgrade the tier but then we also have these ones up the top so these are three to one and they upgrade the rarity so if i pick three tier two cards that are normal on the normal chaos card selection and i hit craft that's going to pop me out one tier two magic card and if i go over to magic and i pop in three of the same card as magic and i hit go that one's going to pop me out a rare card now this isn't super important right when we get to end game because right when we get to end game we're actually okay running white and magic cards that still levels our chaos statue it's okay by the time you get into like tier 13 to tier 14 ish chaos statue you really don't want to be running normal or even magic cards if you can help it anymore you want to be trying your best to run as many rare maps or cards as physically possible and they don't drop enough on their own to maintain rares forever so what we need to do is be tearing them up and qualitying them up to make them all rare now there is also a rare card synthesis, which if we pop three of those in, it will give me back one card that will either be rare or legendary. So there's a chance that it becomes a legendary card and there's a chance that you just lose two rare cards. Now, I haven't played around with that one a lot. The legendary cards do sell for quite a bit on the auction house. So you can use that as a way to get rubies but I haven't done that very much at all. Um, I've done it enough to get one. I got one and I ran it. I'm not really sure entirely why they sell for a whole lot of rubies because it didn't feel that much more rewarding than just running three separate rare cards. So for now, until I understand that better, I'm not gonna suggest people use this unless they're desperate for a way to get rubies and flooded in additional maps because that just did feel like just it just felt like a little bit of a waste but between tearing up your cards and raritying up your cards and also doing all of your charms all the way up to tier six that can keep your entire alchemy bench slot just completely full the entire time uh, so as many of these slots as you can afford to open, you will be able to just run them all of the time. Um, I'm going to say in order to be efficient, we realistically probably need at least three. You don't necessarily have to unlock the last two. I did and I can use them, 
but I was able to get by having three total. So that was all right. That's probably the minimum I suggest. And that is pretty much the end of this table. There's a few more little things you can use, like you can transfer runes and link runes here. And you can also transfer gear rolls to different stuff. Um, so there's a, there's a lot of little things that we can do here, but, but a lot of those are just for you to play around with on your own, basically. And also not the important parts that get churned out all day, every day, your card and charms. That is your default bread and butter. You're just going to be running them the entire time. Every you'll do a map, come out, go to your charm table, pick up new charms, go to your alchemy table, pick up the charm rewards, put new ones in, start synthing again, sell, go back into another map. That is just going to be the loop the whole time. Keep them running forever. It will very much help you out in the long run. All right. That is the end of our alchemy table. Hopefully some people start doing that because uh, it, you can level a lot quicker in rare cards. And if you do this, you will maintain rare cards forever. I have not run a non rare card in about five or six days now. We just run rare cards. So that's been great. I hope that helps everybody and I will see everybody later. Goodbye.